Hello, welcome to Red Book Joy. Today I'm doing a reading ramble. And if you're new to the channel, I'm Jack, and a reading ramble is where I catch you up on all the things I've been reading, thinking about reading, what I, my thoughts on reading, all sorts of things like that, and just life in general, actually. So, um, yeah, welcome. It's been a while since I filmed anything. 21st of October was the last time I filmed something, and this is the 21st of November. So I've been kind of um, getting into that thing. I don't know if anyone else gets this, where they haven't done something for a while, and the longer they don't do it, the longer they keep putting it off. So that's me with BookTube at the moment. Um, I've been very, very busy, um, but who isn't, <laughs> right? Uh, but yeah, I've been trying to catch up on watching BookTube as well, because that's something I've been not doing as much of uh, because life's been crazy busy. Um, so yeah, I'm trying to catch up on my friends' channels, uh, the people I love watching. I've been trying to just get myself back into booktube a little bit. Um, I've been releasing videos one a week because I had them batch recorded, like I said, but um, yeah. So I'm gonna talk about what I've been recently reading, all the millions of books I keep starting. And yeah, normally I'd have a cup of tea with me, but I've kind of just forced myself to sit down and film right now while I've got a spare half hour between work. So grab a cup of tea if you've got one and let's get into it. So I've finished nine books since I last spoke to you all, uh, which sounds like a lot, but <laughs> I think the last reading ramble I did was sort of the beginning of October. So it's kind of, you know, nine books, uh, some of them are children's books and graphic novels as well. So, you know, not a huge amount of reading, but some of them are very big books. So I have finished The Tenant of Wildfell Hall by Anne Bronte, which was my only Victober read in the end, but I really, really enjoyed it. I started reading it with a lovely group who were listening to the audiobook, and that was being run by lovely Angela, whose channel I will link in the description box below. Please go and check her out. She's lovely, go and follow her. But she put together a lovely group of people based on the group that I read Frankenstein with back in July for Jane Austen July. So they were a lovely group, but I had to drop out. Again, I've just basically had lots going on personally, with family and all sorts of things that just basically meant I was just becoming a bit overwhelmed with everything and not being able to keep up with group reads and um, and that kind of thing. So I had to drop out of the group, but I carried on reading the book. But thank you, Angela, for spurring me on to read the book because I really, really enjoyed it. But there will be a review to come. Then I finished the lovely uh, Tea Dragon Society trilogy. I read the first two books last year and I finished the Tea, Dra Tea Dragon Tapestry, which is book number three by Kay O'Neill. And they're just lovely, cozy, fantasy, uh, warm, like diverse, just go gorgeous, gorgeous coziness. And this one in particular has amazing autumnal uh, scenes and aesthetic about it. So yeah, it was just what I was in the mood for at the time. Then I finished Finding Bear by Hannah Gold, and I will have a review of this coming up, which is the follow-up to The Last Bear, which is a middle grade book about a girl who befriends a polar bear, and it was a big hit last year, and this is the follow-up. So I'm going to leave a link to my original review in the description box or on a card somewhere, and you can go and check that out if you're interested in it. And at some point, there will be a review of Finding Bear up on my channel. Then I buddy read Dead Man's Walk, which is the third book in the Lonesome Dove trilogy. Uh, trilogy? Quartet <laughs> um, by Larry McMurtry. And I've been reading this with Sandy from Miss Reads a lot. We're on the third book. Now it's the third book published, but the first book, if you were to read them in chronological order of, because it's like a prequel. So when you look up the Lonesome Dove books on Amazon, here in the UK at least, this book is listed as the first book. It's not the first book. The first book is Lonesome Dove. And having read Lonesome Dove, Streets of Laredo, which is the second book, which is down as books three and four, and the next two books are booked down as books one and two because they're prequels, um, you would be forgiven for thinking you should read them in this order. Don't read uh, the Dead Man's Walk book first, whatever you do, because the Lonesome Dove, the original book, is a masterpiece. It's one of my favourite books I read last year, probably possibly my favourite book of last year, and it was just so, so good that I've been reading the rest of the series just out of curiosity for the characters, the second book, Streets of Laredo, was okay. Nothing to write home about. The third book is great because we're kind of having a prequel of the characters from Lonesome Dove, the first book. We're going back and seeing their kind of origin story, if you like. And that's really great. And it's even better because we know what they become. If I read this book first, I don't think I'd probably continue with the series. So um, not because it's bad, but because it's like, it's okay. Uh, it's miles better than Streets of Laredo, but still, can't get invested in these characters the way I'm invested in them because of reading Lonesome Dove. So yeah, if I give you any bit of advice, it would be that. Don't read them in the sort of 
chronological order, if you like, reading in publishing date order. Sandy from Miss Reads a Lot has been my buddy reader for this whole journey so far, and we've been loving uh, getting back to these characters, so we really enjoyed it. Um, and I would urge you to go and watch her video because she does a really good review of it. Um, and I'll leave that in the description box or on a card or something. Then I finished The Thirteenth Tale by Diane Setterfield. This was the final book for the last 12 months of FOMO book club. So we set up the Fear of Missing Out book club. Um, my friend Alice from Alice and Giant's Bookshelf and Gem from Gemma Books. We set this book club up a year ago and we picked six books and we thought we'd see how it goes and it has gone smashingly, I have to say. I'm gonna do a ranking video, I think, for my FOMO book club picks. Every book has been great. Some of them have been fantastic. The 13th Tale was fantastic and uh, we read that and then we invited the lovely Katie Lumsden from Books and Things who claims this is her favourite you know, modern contemporary novel and she came along for our live chat. So I'm going to put a link to that as well if you want to find out my thoughts on The 13th Tale. It's spoiler filled I'm afraid but The 13th Tale is a gothic historical fiction novel. Um, we actually, interestingly, can't quite figure out exactly when it's set, but a young woman who lives in a bookshop with her father and she's quite introverted and solitary and she writes biographies and she is sent a letter asking her to come and interview a very famous person who is known rec known to be reclusive, uh, who gives out interviews but never gives out real information about herself, like a, a, an author. And she goes to her house to interview her about her life. And uh, yeah, it's very gothic, suspenseful, and just really enjoyed it. So yeah, check out the, uh, if you've read the book, you wanna check out our live discussion. It was very good, good fun. So go and check that out. Um, then I read, finished the final book in the First Law Trilogy. I have read this First Law Trilogy three times now because I love it so much. Uh, but it's the first time I've buddy read it and I've been reading it with Alice and Gemma. And so what can I say? It's the third book in a trilogy. If you haven't read the First Law Trilogy by Joe Abercrombie and you like um, grimdark fantasy, then you are missing out because it's fantastic. If you've not really been that into fantasy and you fancy something that's gritty and political and character focused, then I'd recommend trying the First Law Trilogy. So we're now currently reading the next book, which is one of the standalone books set in that world, uh, Best Served Cold. Best Served Cold is uh, optioned for a film so that's very exciting and uh, we're really enjoying that as well. Then I finished Penance by Eliza Clark. Review to come. Penance is really good. It's about four girls who live in a very rundown coastal town in the north of England and uh, one of them is killed and the story is told in the form of a true crime non-fiction book but it is fiction and it is kind of a discussion really an exploration of the um, true crime industrial complex they call it nowadays i don't know where that comes from complex but the industry that is true crime examines that and parodies it and it's yeah it's really really interesting i'm going to do a review of it because it's quite complicated in terms of i think the themes in it which i think are fantastic but there are themes of you know poverty and communities in crisis and class and social media and all of those things, which I find extremely fascinating anyway. So I will leave, um, if I've done the reviews for these things, they'll all be in the description box. If not, they're probably not gonna be out before this is out, to be honest with you, but I will be doing a review of that. Then I finished The Woman in Me by Britney Spears, which I was desperate to read as soon as she announced that she was going to be releasing an autobiography because I am a Britney Spears fan and I have got a review of that. I've actually filmed that today. So that's either out before this or after it. And then finally today, I finished The Poisonwood Bible by Barbara King Solver, which was pretty excellent, I have to say. Um, started off extremely slowly for me and I almost at one point considered giving up but I was buddy reading it with Alice and we decided we'd push on through because both of us were finding it really hard going in the beginning but the characters were so good. So the Poisonwood Bible is about a um, Christian missionary family who go to uh, in 1959 go to Zaire as it was known at the time the Belgian Congo and they're there when the uh, independence of the Congo is announced and they're there through all the political sort of turmoil and strife uh, that accompanies this independence and the interference of outside political powers. And whilst this is all going on, they're trying to live in a rural village, in a community. Their father is, I suppose we would call him kind of a fundamentalist Christian, and he is trying to bring God or his version of God to the locals there. And he is, 
uh, obsessive and abusive and yeah the, the whole story is so well written and so well told that I became engrossed in it but probably not until about the 200th page, it's 600 odd pages. But once I got hooked, I was hooked. Uh, and Alice and I have really found the journey with that family, with all of those different characters to be absolutely fascinating. And um, yeah, well worth a read. So currently I've got a lot of things on the go or started. Um, I'm in the middle of still, well, the final, final part of Empire of Pain uh, by Patrick Ragan Keefe, which is the story of the Sackler dynasty. I've mentioned this in a few videos now because I've been reading it for months. It's the kind of thing that I, I can dip in and out of because even though it's compelling and I think it is a good read, it's heavy going and also I keep getting distracted by other things. But I'm in the sort of final stretch of reading that at the moment, really enjoying that one. I started Blood Over Bright Haven by M.L. Wang, who wrote um, The Sword of Kaigen, which I loved and I have a review of, but it's got pushed to the back because I had some buddy reads coming up. So it's kind of just been pushed to one side. But I've also got a load of library books either on the go or waiting to be picked up. Um, one of which is Fans by Michael Bond, which I've been talking about for a while, which is about fandoms and um, the sort of psychology behind that, uh, which I was really interested in after reading This Is Not A Book About Benedict Cumberbatch, which is a humorous, but also very astute book about fandoms and particularly female fandoms. And then I've got a book out called Reach for the Stars by Michael Cragg, which is an oral history of British pop music between 1996 and 2006, which covers sort of the Spice Girls era and on, and the explosion of boy and girl bands and mixed sort of bubblegum pop bands that came out at that time, which I, I actually really like. <laughs> I like the music of that era. I find it kind of, it's ridiculously cheesy and bubbly, but I like it. So I'm interested to get into this because apparently it's a proper tell-all about that time and about the issues that these pop stars, these young pop stars had with these squeaky clean images they were supposed to uphold. And the things they were put through by their management, by the press, by, you know, just uh, when fame started to wane and what happened to them afterwards, you know, so it's really interesting. And I started off reading the first chapter and it does start with the Spice Girls and every Spice Girl part, apart from Victoria Beckham has got a, has been interviewed for this. So it's really interesting to see how they started. I'm not a huge Spice Girls fan, but I find that whole cultural phenomenon of pop bands, pop artists at that time really interesting, especially having recently read the Britney Spears biography. Uh, this was pre-social media. This is pre them being able to directly talk to us as their fans or people who were their fans. I wasn't fans of all of these people, but I just find the whole phenomena really fascinating and finally hearing from them what it was really like to be them at that time. So yeah, I'm enjoying that. And then I've also got out, oh, a book called When I Was 10, by Fiona Cummins, which is a thriller about a girl who supposedly murdered her family when she was 10. So <laughs> that's kind of the things I'm reading at the moment. So I'm just kind of trying to just read what makes me happy and enjoy things that um, where my nose is taking me. But the problem with that is I'm starting too many books. I've also got um, a few other books on the go, which are, you know, either short story collections or things that you dip in and out of or graphic novels. I won't go into all of them now because there's just no point. <laughs> really. I've just talked to you about the things that are really interesting. So it's autumn. I'm trying to be gentle with myself. I'm trying to not push myself to do too many things, which is kind of what I do a lot of the time and I end up feeling stressed. So um, yeah, I'm going to film this video. Po hopefully this will go out at the weekend. When you're watching it, it'll be the weekend, I hope. And um, there's lots of things that I'm doing at the moment to make myself happy as well. You know, I'm really enjoying the autumn foliage around at the moment, which I'll put in some footage of because we have just been loving it. Uh, my partner and I have been going out on drives and walks at the weekend on Dartmoor and various places and the leaves are just at the very end of their life now, but they're still quite glorious. So that's been really cheering me up. Uh, another thing that I've been really delighting in is um, loose leaf tea. So I visited Bird and Blend, which is um, an independent tea shop um, here in the UK and they've got a branch in Exeter near me and I discovered it a couple of weeks ago, uh, walked past and they're in there and I picked up, they've got like a taster pack. So you get like a tote bag and a taster pack of teas and I picked up several of their teas and um, the one that's really been 
glorious for me is this coconut milk oolong which is just smells amazing the whole ritual of putting the loose leaf tea into this strainer in the pot and just putting the lid on it and waiting for it to brew it's just been so gorgeous i've been loving that and yeah getting up in the morning putting my essential oil burner on putting on a really nice calming ambient video i've got a playlist which i can make public if people are interested um, but things like um sort of lo-fi autumn videos or studio ghibli style videos um i just put them on in the background while i read and i'm just finding that really delightful also all the cozy clothes lots of cozy clothes and blankets and things like that so yeah that's what life's been like so tell me how have you been what have you been up to in the cozy autumn months what have you been reading um if you've never been here before perhaps consider sticking around for some of these promised reviews which will come in the next few weeks or months but they will be up on the channel and hopefully um you like it enough to stick around maybe consider subscribing if you are not sure what to say in the comment box perhaps leave me an emoji that is about being cozy and hopefully i will see you again here soon bye